What's good? We're back in this thing. Today, we're gonna be going over the Lil Tecca Lot of Me music video. I've had so many DMs about this music video and all the effects. We're gonna be going over and doing a full breakdown on the whole music video, showing you the concepts and how to do effects like this. If you're interested in that, sit back, relax, click like, and let's get into the video. So first off, I just wanna give a shout out to Kyle and Nightiv. Kyle's the one that shot it. Nightiv's the one that edited it. Super fire video. I really like the whole style. I actually didn't even know Nightiv edited this until I checked in the description. It's a little bit different than his normal style. I actually personally like this a little bit more. It's just more relaxed kind of like throughout the music video they do like blurs warps and just ghosting effects like like very subtle effects that are just done tastefully throughout the music video and i think it looks really good so we're going to break down how to do a lot of these also before we get into the video if you want to support the channel and get some editing assets as well you can check out my website briandelmata.com i'll have it linked down below we got the texture pack thermal pack crt pack Bunch of different stuff that's going to take your music videos, help you edit them a lot faster and give you some really unique looks. Also, if you want to follow along, I upload all the project files to Patreon for all my tutorials. So if you're interested in that, check it out. So for this music video, they did a lot of blurs, warps. You can see here, I'm just scrubbing through the video. A lot of just like subtle things that look really good. And I'm going to go through and give you some effect names and different ways that I would use them personally. We're not going to be taking every single effect and breaking it down, but I'll show you the concepts. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to understand how all these effects were done and then be able to put your own twist on it. So I just want to go through and show you three effects that I kind of came up with using very similar styles that he did in this music video, but a little bit different in my take on them. This first one's like a little bit of blur, like glow and warp here. I did a really bad job on the rotoscope. I just wanted to show you the example of what you can do. If you turn off the rotoscope here, you can see the effects kind of just like a, like a warp. I like that effect personally a lot. It's really simple. It looks good. This next one is also really simple. It's just a clone behind him. A little bit of blur. I'll touch on that effect in a second. And lastly, this is my favorite effect that he did in the music video. So I kind of tried to do my own take on it. We have the tile moving down and like, it almost looks like it's a kind of like liquid scaling up the wall. I tried to have the inside part here, like the inverse of this. So when this would go up, this inside part would go down. And then I have like the clone behind him, kind of like a, like a blur ghost trail kind of effect. So those are the three effects we're gonna be going over. I'll touch on some effects that I would use to get looks similar to this and point you guys in the right direction when making effects like this. I'll give you some effect names that are plugins. That way, if you have some plugins, you can use it. And then I'll also go through some native ones. So if you don't wanna buy any plugins or download anything, you can do it that way. So starting off here, let's go over this effect at first. I'm going to assume for this tutorial that you guys know how to rotoscope. Basically, if you don't, this is the rotoscope tool out here. You're just gonna brush out your subject, click freeze, and then duplicate the layer. So you can see the top layer is just little Tekka here. It's him masked out basically. And then the bottom layer is where the effect's gonna be done. We're gonna be doing that for all of the effects. So if you are not familiar with rotoscoping, go through all my other tutorials. I go over it more in depth, but I just wanna save a little bit of time for this one. So let's just start from the beginning and I'm gonna go through the effects that I use. So you can see here, I use Sapphire, Distort Blur, Turbulence Displace, and Glow. I'll turn on and off each single one so you can kind of see what they do. I think the main thing in this one is the Distort Blur. I really like how this turns out, but you can do something similar with a turbulence displace, some glow, and then like a Gaussian blur. So let's go through and break down each of them. I really like the way distort blur works. So I'm going to drag that on. And as you can see, when you first drag it on, it doesn't really do anything too cool. I think to get a good look, you want to bring up the blur lens a little bit. You can see how it gets a little smoother. I think it just makes it look a little bit more trippy and stuff like that. And you can play around with the blur amount. And all these things are key frameable. You can start off at zero and add it in. Let's do something a little bit different than what I did. So I'm gonna start off with a blur amount keyframed to zero and we'll make it a little bit more like trippy looking as it goes on. So we're just gonna bring up the blur amounts, maybe something like one. It's all gonna be dependent on what you think looks good. You could also turn up the warp amount if you want. I think that looks cool, let's do that. So I'm gonna bring up the warp amount a little bit so it warps. Let's go to that first frame again and reset the warp amount. I'm going to press you on my keyboard to open up those keyframes. And let's drag that all the way to the end. And then I'm going to highlight both of those. Click F9 or easy ease our keyframes. And you can see that's starting to look pretty cool. I think it's really, really subtle. And honestly, I like how it's subtle. But if you wanted to add a little bit more trippiness or you didn't have distort blur, you could use something like turbulence displace. And I think that's going to give you a very similar look. It's just going to enhance that like trippiness to it. With turbulence displace, you can play around with so many different settings like the turbulence, bulge, twist, all these different settings are going to give you different looks. Let's do twist for this one. And I'm going to do the same general concept where it doesn't start off with anything at the beginning. I'm going to bring that to zero. And we're going to have it get progressively more trippy throughout. So then I'm just going to keyframe to find something that I like. That looks good to me. 
let's drag that all the way to the end. And then again, easy easing those. And I like that, but I think the size of the displacement is too small for me. I'm not going to keyframe this, but I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. So it's like more bigger waves. Once you go through and play with these effects, you'll understand how to use them a lot more. I highly encourage that you go through don't copy the values that I'm doing or try to replicate anything that Knight of did in his video. Just take inspiration from it and then make your own effects out of it. So that's what we're doing here. I think that's looking pretty good. I like how the trippiness. Then there's some other things you can add. You can add some glow, some blurs. You can add so much to this. I think for this effect, I would call it good here. In the last version, I did have glow, but I think I like it like this. And I think that's the main reason I like this music video so much is because the effects are pretty subtle and they're not in your face. So something like this fits into the music video really well. And uh, I like how it looks. So like I said, Sapphire Distort Blur would be great for this effect. If you don't have Sapphire, you can use Turbulence Displays. And maybe instead of distort blur, you could do something like Gaussian blur. Also go through all the distorts that are built into After Effects. All these different distorts in here are going to give you different looks. Very similar to tur Turbulence Displace, but they're just going to do different things to your footage. So go through, play through all of those, and, they, and then you'll be able to get like effects kind of in the same genre. And I think that's kind of how you develop your own style and make something unique. So in this video, he has like a lot of these ghosting style effects and like just things popping out. You can see how tech is kind of popping out behind him. So I wanted to make something similar, but also a little bit unique. So basically all I did for this effect was I did the rotoscope. So Tekka rotoscoped, and then I duplicated that rotoscope layer. So there's two layers of Tekka rotoscoped. And then I added Sapphire blur motion to the middle one or the background layer. And then if you play with the Z, from Z distance and to Z distance, you can get looks of something you like. I think I just want it to come out like that. And you can keyframe these values too, but it kind of just looks good just riding out like that. It's something really simple. If you don't have Sapphire Blur Motion to get a similar look, you could probably just scale up your layer here a bit and then maybe add some kind of blur on. Let's see what we got here. You could just play through it with all these blurs. I think something that's probably going to give you the most similar look is maybe directional blur and then just keyframe that blurred length up a lot. You can see here we're right around 40. And it's looking pretty similar to what we just had. I like how it looks. And uh, without having that plugin, you can get something really similar. I do like that blur motion plugin though, because you can do a lot with it. Here, I'll show you in a, I'll show you an example real quick. If you drag that on and you look at like all the different settings you can do. If you do the two rotate, you can like get some crazy looks here. So I do recommend this plugin, but if you don't have it, you could probably finesse some other stuff. Let's go and maybe just screw around. In this video, I just want to show you concepts and how you can do similar stuff. So I'm going to key from the two rotate. Let's kind of just, let's just have it rotate like that. I wonder what that looks like. I've never done this before, but it might look cool. It's easy to ease those. And it kind of goes with like the motion and the movement he's doing. So I think it works. Maybe I do it a little bit more subtle of an effect, but I do like that. There's so many different things you can do and experiment with this effect itself. Like you can just keyframe all of these settings and everything. So you could really come up with some cool stuff. I like this plugin a lot and you can make some similar stuff that he did in the music video that way. And then lastly, I just want to go over this effect here. There's a lot going on, but I'm going to try to make it as simplistic as possible. Basically, it's just two different effects going on with a lot of different masking and rotoscoping. So you can see how the wall kind of like fades down here in the background on the left hand, right hand side and then the wall fades up. And then as that wall starts going down, this one starts going back up and there's this ghost behind here. So let's go to a different comp here and I'm gonna show you what I did. So basically I have one layer rotoscoped out of Tekka and then one of the dude on the left. So just go ahead, if you have some people, just rotoscope them out. If you have like multiple people, a lot of times it's easier just to rotoscope them out in separate layers. And then I'm gonna turn back on that background layer and then let's duplicate that background layer. And then you're gonna want some kind of displacement map effect. You can use Displacer Pro, it's a free plugin, but I think since most people probably don't have that, let's stick with displacement map and see what we can come up with. In the effect that I did, I used Displacer Pro, but most of the time they're pretty similar. So let's go and see what we can do with this. I'm gonna make the map max horizontal displacement zero, go to the start and keyframe that max vertical displacement. And I want it to kind of start already falling down. So something like that, let's go. I want to match like his like movements. So as soon as he starts moving that arm in this way, I'm going to have it go back up. So right there. And then let's have it go all the way down to whatever we want. Like that looks good. And then let's go to the last frame. And I'm actually gonna bring it past just a little bit so it has a little bit of smooth. And I'm gonna bring it a little bit past the end too. That way it just continuously moves up. And then I'll highlight all those and click F9. And we can see what we got. That's looking pretty smooth, honestly, already. I really like how that looks. What I would do to this though, is I would add some RSMB onto the layer, just so it smooths these edges out a little bit. And I would even bump down the blur amount to 0.25. If you don't have RSMB, you can use something like 
CC force motion blur. It's going to do the same thing. I think it generally runs a little bit slower on your computer, but it will give you that similar look. I would just bump up the blur samples a little bit so it's a little smoother. And then if you want more blur, bring up the shutter angle higher. If you want less blur, bring it down lower. We're going to stick with RSMB just because of how slow CC Force Motion Blur actually runs on my computer. So now when we play that with the RSMB, it just looks a little bit smoother. I like how it looks a little bit more. You can see if we turn it on and off, it just makes like those harsh edges kind of go away and make it look a little bit more liquidy. And if you really wanted to do what I did and, you know, either mask out and not have it do certain areas, all you'd have to do is duplicate your background layer. I'm going to drag it above this layer of Tekka with the displacement map and then go to the pen tool. I think it's probably the easiest to use the pen tool for this effect here. And then let's just trace this wall down. And I'm going to do a real rough job just for the sake of tutorial. But what you do is you go to the mask, open that up, keyframe the position. Let's go 10 frames to the left because I didn't even start in the at the beginning or the end. So let's click shift on our keyboard to move that point. And we can just move these points and kind of follow the outline of the wall. If you wanted to do something that was a little bit more complex, you would just use the rotoscope tool. And let's go to the beginning. And like I said, if you wanted to move each individual point, all you do is you just press shift and it should allow you to move these keyframes. And then just go in between the keyframes when you're like moving 10 frames at a time and just tweak them a little bit. Like I said, for the tutorial, I'm going to go relatively quick. So it might not be absolutely perfect, but you'll understand what I'm doing here. So then once you go through and you see now if we play it, Depending on which blending mode you have on, it won't be doing it in that area here. I think it looks really cool already. I'm going to go to the mask options and feather it just a little bit so it's not as harsh of an edge. Now you can barely even tell it kind of just looks like it's not happening in the door frame. And if you wanted to, you could invert it so it's only happening happening in the door frame. And that's what's so cool about these effects when you add and subtract doing masks and everything. It will help out a lot and make your effects look a just a little bit more complex and it makes it seem like it's such a more hard effect but it's really not. And then if you wanted to, you could add displacement map on the inside layer and just have it do the opposite. So I could have it start, I could have it start down and we could have it go up when the other one goes down and basically just do the inverse of what was happening before. This isn't necessary or anything. I just want to share ideas with you guys. And that's kind of what went through my head when I was doing it. So now you can see this kind of does the opposite of that. It's just one of those little extra complexities that you can do to your effects to just make them stand out a little bit more. And then if you wanted that like ghost effect, what I did is I just duplicated the top rotoscope layer of Tekka, go to effects and echo is a really good effect to get those clones. And I'm going to go to the beginning or the first frame here, keyframe the number of echoes to zero and then go to composite in front of. And then I like making the decay like 0.8. That way it just gets a little bit more see through each clone and then let's go like 10 frames to the right and then make 10 clones so now you can see we have a bunch of clones here for Tekka and then I would actually just pre-compose this layer and move all the attributes and adjust the comp duration to that that way you, we can go inside this comp and play around with what we got here you can see we got the clones you can add something like blur some kind of blur on here just to make it a little bit more smooth let's add like directional blur and then since like the main movements to left and right i'm going to have that kind of mimic that with the motion blur just bring that up a little bit that way it just smooths it out a little bit more if you wanted to you could go through and like keyframe the direction throughout if you're like subject moves in different ways let's go back into here and we can see what that kind of looks like i think that's already looking a lot smoother we and then something, if you really wanted to and make clones look like meshed together a little bit more, I would keep that directional blur on here. And then if you go and click on this layer, go to file, export, add to render queue. And then if you go to the output mode and go to channels, uh, RGB plus alpha, it's going to render it out with a transparent background. And let's do blur example. We can replace the example I already had. Then when you open that back up in the project, I'm going to just put it in that pre-comp and replace the file actually itself. You can see we do have that blur and it doesn't change anything. But then if you add RSMB on top of that, for some reason, RSMB just works better when you do it this way for these clones. I've noticed at least. So then I just brought up the motion sensitivity and the blur amount. And now when we play this, you can see the clone is way smoother. Uh, I just think that looks really good with these clone effects when you have a really smooth looking clone. You can see my rotoscope isn't too good. I was just doing it for the sake of tutorial. And I think when like the colors of the ghost are like very similar to the back or to the background, it doesn't look as crazy. I just want to show you the concepts. So now when we play that, I think that looks really crazy good. I think the only thing that's really tweaking me out right now is having that uh, that displacement map on that like inside part. So let's just turn that off real quick. And now we don't see Tekka's head behind here. So Something like that is pretty simple to do. It's just knowing the concepts. And that's what I want to show you guys. Like I said, there's so many different effects that he did throughout this music video. There's a lot of blurs. There's a lot of like distorts, uh, some glows, and just like some clone effects. 
and they're all just done tastefully throughout the music video. I think when you use it, the way you can make effects so much better is not just doing the effect, it's like doing it in a way where the effect makes sense. So for example, when he was using those clone effects, he was doing it in like scenes where there's a lot of motion like this, and that just makes it generally look a lot better. And then this wall like displacement map effect that I did, it looks good on a wall, but it might not look good on a different background. So it's like definitely a lot of the way you apply the effects and where you apply them to. So keep that in mind when you're going over effects like this. But yeah, that's pretty much all I got for you guys in this one. If you made it all the way to the end, like always, I do appreciate you. If you haven't already, like, comment, subscribe, do all the YouTube stuff. If you guys like these breakdown style videos more so than the direct tutorials, let me know in the comments. I do like doing these a lot, so let me know. Be sure to follow me on all social medias. I'll have them linked down below. If you want to support the channel, you can check out my website, briandelmata.com. Grab yourself some music video editing packs and presets. But yeah, that's pretty much all I got for you guys on this one. Peace.